Hello, welcome to another My Town South End interview. I'm here today with Pat Higgins. Pat Higgins is a very clever man. He makes horror films, and I'm glad to say he makes them here locally in Lee. Pat, first of all, I'd like to say congratulations for the best independent film at the Fantastic Films UK. Thank you very much. That is actually an ama amazing achievement. Could you tell us a bit about that, um, that um, film, f UK? Yeah, um, fan the Fantastic Films Festival, uh, it's, it's one of Britain's longest running film festivals, it's got a, a, a good tradition there, uh, and our film The Devil's Music uh, picked up Best Independent Feature there in 2008, towards the, towards the end of that year, um, which we were very proud of, um, so... Uh, don't really know what else to say about that. Fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic. Well done. I know I sprang that one up on you a bit quick. <laughs> right. I was lucky enough to see The Devil's Music, which I actually think is one of the best films I've ever seen in a, in a small independent film. Um, could you tell me, Pat, how long have you been making horror films? Yeah. The, uh, the first film that we made was Trash House. Uh, Trash House we made in the first few weeks of 2004. Um, and then that, that went out, it took a little while to get distributed and that came out on DVD in 2006, so there was a little run up there, um, but yeah, so my, my career really started properly in 2004, I'd say. Okay, brilliant. And so what was your inspiration for making the film The Devil's Music? The Devil's Music, um, well, it, it's, a, it's a mockumentary, it's, uh, it takes the, the form of a documentary but, but sort of puts um, narrative cinema onto that. And it came about through a desire to play around with different types of filmmaking and also to tell a story about the media, which is very much what it is. Uh, it, it, it sort of shows how um, the media can be both an influencer on, um, on those that, that watch it, but also takes in influences from the world. So it's both a, a mirror that kind of flips both ways. Uh, and so I liked the idea of being able to play around with that form and tell a story about about rock and roll music, which is basically what it is, with also a subtext of horror movies underneath it. That's great. I was going to say, did you compose the music for that film? Um, well, I've got a wonderful composer called Phil Sheldon, who's also local. Um, uh, Phil is um, South End born and bred as well, pretty much. And uh, effectively, I recorded. I, I play uh, acoustic guitar terribly, terribly badly. <laughs> so I recorded some horrifyingly bad demos uh, and, the, and the lyrics. And I basically sent them to Phil with large apologies, saying sorry. Uh, and, and he then took them away and a couple of months later came back with fully formed, brilliant sounding rock music. Uh, he's one of these sort of multi-instrumental guys. He can just play anything and he's just fantastic. So he was able to take my very primitive scrawling and turn that into something that sounds like chart music, which basically it does, hopefully. Fantastic. And that's a silly question, really. Are you a horror film fan and what are your influences? Oh, I'd, I'd say yes, uh, absolutely. Um, and my influences, I'd say uh, The Shining is probably my favourite horror film of all time. Of course, a Kubrick film, um, but very methodical, not necessarily what you'd expect from a horror movie, but maybe uh, uh, I think one of the greats of all time. Um, I also love the 1963 version of The Haunting, a uh, Robert Wise movie, which I, I think is just fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's one that really shows everything all in the mind, doesn't uh, it? it lets the audience do all the thinking and all the imagining. And also I think the remake of that was so utterly terrible that it showed, it, it almost showed the original up as the masterpiece that it is because the, the remake clumsily messed up everything that was so perfect about the original. And so uh, they, they'd be the two real touchstones, but other things like The Exorcist and The Evil Dead, of course, are, are still up on my list as well, very much. Oh, you can't beat the originals. You can never beat the originals, ever. Um, watching The Devil's Music, it seemed to me, personally, anyway, it had a bit of a goth theme to it. Would you, would you agree with that? It seems a little bit gothic. Um, I, I think it, it's... Uh, that is very much an element of it, and I think that's kind of uh, kind of goes with the territory. I think because it's focused on a rock star, and a rock star who was very dark um, and the sort of media baiting kind of Marilyn Manson kind of figure, um, it's difficult to go down that route without going for, for some gothic imagery. 
Um, so I, I think it kind of went with the territory, and I think it would have been difficult to do it any other way. Uh, but it was great. It was it gave us a sort of visual palette to explore that I found really, mm. really good fun. And I, I love all the costumes in in the film as well. Did the cast have any input into their costumes at all? Absolutely. Um, we were very, very lucky that um, Victoria and a, a gentleman called Adrian very kindly sort of uh, gave us access to a, a wide variety of costumes that we wouldn't have had access to otherwise, and we're incredibly grateful to them for that. Um, Victoria, who played Erica, was also very interested in uh, in using the costumes as a way of showing different sides of her character. We, we actually had a... Um, the, the dress that she wears in the main sequence um, where she's stabbed on stage without giving too much the plot away uh, was actually the wedding dress from Hellbride um, oh, okay. and I nice. gave that to Victoria Hellbride was a movie we'd shot sort of two years beforehand um, and so we, we got the wedding dress which was already kind of distressed and bloodstained from Hellbride gave that to Victoria and she spent many weeks uh, customising it and by the time she took it on set it had lots of very ornate writing on it where she'd sit and uh, calligraphy sort of all over it so it went from being a sort of standard wedding dress albeit one that, that got heftily destroyed in the making of uh, Hellbride through to being this sort of beautiful custom made outfit and that was just through Victoria's own creative genius so uh, yeah they, they certainly had an input and uh, uh, very much so Fantastic, that was really does look good the costumes, <laughs> um, how about um, when you actually decide the process of making a film and you have a read through, do you let the cast input their own ideas on their characters? Um, in the case of uh, Devil's Music, because it was so important that it be naturalistic it, and because it's a sort of fake documentary, um, we, I wanted to make sure that every, the words everybody was saying sounded natural coming out of their mouths. So I was more eager for the cast to have an input on uh, on the words they were saying than possibly on some of the other films I've been slightly more this is the script and this is kind of how we do it whereas in The Devil's Music um, I was happy for people to paraphrase their lines so that it sounded more natural coming out of their mouths there's also a degree of ad-libbing that went onto the, the process when we were working through scenes again to get those sort of naturalistic beats and occasionally people would throw in lines that I thought were fantastic which then obviously stayed uh, stayed in it so it was a very much a collaborative process from a, a, an initial script through to what you see on the screen. I see, that's really good. And also, watching the film, I was very pleased to see there were a lot of South End locations <laughs> on it, being the My Town South End website. Could you please tell me why you chose South End? Um, I, I love shooting in South End. Um, we've, we've always sort of had a, uh, as it been where I've grown up, we've always had very close links to the area. Um, our first feature Trash House we shot entirely more or less at the seabed centre in Shoebury Ness and since then we've gone back and, and used the seabed centre who've always been very lovely to us and very kind. Um, so we've always had roots and, and ties here and it seems a shame not to use them. I think it gives films a very different look to if you shoot in central London not only is it it, it creates its own difficulties but um, it films can all quite end up sort of looking the same whereas if you use a different kind of palette and you use a different kind of um, uh, locations then it stands out to the audience. Hellbride as well uses South End locations quite strongly we've got a lot of shots of the the seafront and and the pier as well in that um, just as a way of uh, of giving the film a unique look really. But, yeah, I couldn't imagine not using South Good. End. Good, pleased to hear that. <laughs> pleased to hear that. Very pleased to hear that. Going back to Devil's Music again, because that's one of my favourite ones. Um, I was drawn into the story, and I liked the idea of the fact that you implied violence rather than actually showed violence. So was that artistic decision, or was it a, a budgetary decision? I, I think um, with the Devil's Music, a lot of it, again, ties into the realism of it. And I think if you're going to show something that's meant to be realistic, uh, you better be damn sure that it is realistic. And I think that when it comes down to violence, it's a lot more difficult to fake something without that extra wall of... It. If you're faking... It, violence in movies like Killer Killer or Hellbride, at the end of the day, people know they're watching a straightforward horror movie, yeah. and if you have a, a blood splash that looks ridiculous, yeah. it's kind of part of the fun. Whereas if in Devil's Music, we're very conscious of the fact that if you have a blood splash that looks ridiculous, it completely kills all credibility, yeah. draws the audience out of the, the mock documentary thing, yeah. and effectively kills it dead. So, yeah. uh, so we were very eager to make sure that everything on screen was believable. So even things like the few bits of violence that are on screen, we try so hard to make sure that everything down to the sound mix to whatever actually made them credible. 
Um, so uh, rather than going massively over the top mm. with it and just ruining all the credibility of the thing. Well, I think it does look very credible, and it does shows you what you can you can, you can make with actually actually zero money. But do you think that the Hollywood studios have gone a bit money mad and they're making big blockbusters without any decent scripts just with throwing money in? And I think that's going to make a better film just for giving it loads of money. I think there's always been an, uh, an element of that. and I, But I wouldn't go so far as to say it's always the case. I, I saw Inception last week. I think Inception's a fantastic film. And... Uh, and I'm very impressed that a blockbuster film with, with brains in its head like that's got that gives the audience that much credit for intelligence is still getting made. Um, I think that that is at the moment still possibly the exception rather than the rule. Uh, yeah. And you are finding quite a lot of time things get focus grouped so heavily. It, you'll get a, a script that's original and spiky and odd and unique. And then people will sit around the table and scratch their chins a lot and say, well, maybe if we just get that and we make the audience relate to this character yeah. a bit more. And, and then everything kind of becomes this bland soup. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas in, in, in the independent world, you can just say, well, no, that's how it is. I'm shooting it like this. I don't care if that character's unlikable. That's the character I've written. Yeah. Yeah. And no one's going to sit on the other end of a table and go, you can't do that. Yeah. So it's, it's one of the great freedoms that comes with being an indie. Yeah, I love independent films. The fact that you can control it yourself exactly Absolutely, much, yeah, yeah. I think is a lot better. And I think the writing is grittier on British films, definitely. Definitely better on British films. Well, I can heartily recommend The Devil's Music. Absolutely terrific film. It's so nice to have Pat here in Leon C, a local film man, and I can't recommend his films um, enough. And what I'll do, I'll let Pat give you the website address so you can watch The Devil, Devil's Music online. Fantastic. Yeah, if you'd like to see The Devil's Music, please point your browsers towards www.indiemoviesonline.com uh, and if you have a look down there, it's a fantastic website where you can see quite a lot of uh, independent films for free uh, and if you go into the horror section on that, have a look down, scroll down, you can find The Devil's Music on there. You can watch it completely free, there's no horrible software to install, there's, no, uh, there's one advert at the beginning and that's it and you can sit back and enjoy the whole movie. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Pat. And this is David Fox signing off from the My Town South End website. Thanks for watching.